In a city renowned for its history and breathtaking views, a lawyer and human rights activist, Erin Keskin, is taking me on an unusual tour. It's not the side of the city she grew up in, but ever since she learned as a teenager she was Kurdish, these rundown neighborhoods have become very familiar. Şimdi tabii ben e, Türkiye'de birçok Kürt gibi eğer siz Kürt olduğunuzu, Kürt kimliğinizi ileri sürmezseniz diğer insanlar gibi yaşıyorsunuz. Kürt olduğunuzu söylediğiniz andan itibaren, kimliğinizi ileri sürmeye başladığınız andan itibaren baskılar başlıyor. Decades, Turkey's Kurds say they've been victimized by the state and viewed as barbarians. They fled their rural villages, hoping the city would provide shelter and stability. Mostly, it just disappoints. O nedenle Kürtler her zaman yargılandılar kimliklerini savundukları takdirde. Her zaman yaşam hakkı ihlalleriyle karşılaştılar. Köylerinden, şehirlerinden göç etmek zorunda kaldılar. Ee, bu bir devlet politikasıydı. Now it's believed 2 million Kurds live here in a city of around 15 million. Crammed into apartments on either side of the alleys, they struggle to make a living while trying to preserve their strong communal culture and traditions. In December, the EU will decide whether to open discussions over Turkey's long-cherished goal to join the Union. In the past few years, the Turkish state has implemented wide-ranging reforms aimed at improving human rights and freedoms for Kurds. The question the EU will be asking is whether Turkey has gone far enough. Modern Turkey's founder, Kemal Atatürk, believed Kurdish dreams of a homeland were a threat to Turkish unity. He wanted Kurds assimilated. The policy led to a bitter conflict between Kurdish militants and Turkish forces, which has claimed more than 40,000 lives. Keskins helped hundreds of Kurds seek redress through the courts. She herself is being pursued. Years ago, she was jailed for six months for simply using the word Kurdistan because it suggested separatism. Now there's a warrant for her arrest for challenging the military. She could face up to three more years in jail. We've come to the southeastern province of Diyarbakir, the unofficial capital of Turkish Kurdistan. Until recently, it was illegal to even mention the name. In the township of Edel, Ms. Keskin and her colleagues start to gather intelligence on the latest abuses. <laughs> News from these parts rarely makes headlines in Istanbul or Ankara. She's told about the funeral the day before of a young local fighter. 
a member of the militant Kurdistan Workers' Party, the PKK. Baran bari güle güle tene tene. The outlawed PKK began a bloody 20-year campaign against the Turkish state in the mid-1980s. Five years ago, it declared a unilateral ceasefire. But in June, the PKK, now known as Kongre Gel, resumed the armed struggle. The young militant Fatima Edom was buried the day before we arrived. Today is the women's time to mourn. Salal Edom said her sister left the village to fight for the PKK when she was just a teenager. The mothers of other dead militants gather at Fatma Edom's home. Erin Keskin is told the Turkish military returned Fatma's body several days ago. The military said she committed suicide after being cornered in a shootout. But women who prepared the body said it showed signs of torture. Throughout the 1990s, Turkish security forces expelled a million Kurds from their homes in a bid to flush out militants. These abandoned villages are a legacy of nearly 20 years of repression. Human rights groups say thousands of Kurds were killed or simply disappeared. Others were paid and armed by the Turkish state to spy on neighbors and keep them out of the villages. Kürdistan'da 10 bine yakın kontrgerilla cinayeti aydınlatılmamış durumda. 10 bine yakın insan öldürüldü ve failleri belli değil. 2 bin insan gözaltında kayıp edildi. Bunlar da ortaya çıkarılmadı. Bunlar çok çok önemli sorunlar. 4 bin tane köy boşaltıldı. Yani bunları unutarak yeni bir şey kurmak bence çok mümkün değil. Erin Keskin has contested dozens of cases in Kurdish townships throughout the southeast. In pursuit of EU membership, Turkish legal reforms have brought new hope. In this case, she's fighting to reclaim village land that was confiscated from her clients more than 10 years ago. Erin tried to take us to the village. The military had other ideas. There's no law stopping us from entering the village, just the word and guns of the military. 
The military police told us the evacuated village we planned to visit was off limits. They told us to move five kilometres down the road, and in fact, that's their car right behind me. Despite reforms attempting to grant greater freedoms to Kurds, it's an example of the acute sensitivity that's still attached to the Kurdish issue. <laughs> Yet in cities like Diyarbakir, there's no mistaking a more upbeat atmosphere since the PKK ceasefire and Turkey's recent efforts aimed at EU membership. There are new freedoms, a weekly Kurdish TV broadcast and education in Kurdish. Several prominent activists have been freed from jail. These young children may be the first generation to lead normal lives. The quest for normality can't be underestimated. For middle-class Kurds trying to run businesses like Ahmed Cengiz, a life without fear is a welcome change from what he went through in his childhood. Yani korkunç ekonomik yetmezlikler, daralmış bir yaşam ve her yönüyle çok sıkıntılı bir yaşam. Ama düşünün ki bir insan sabah evinden çıkarken bir daha geri gelip gelemeyeceğini bilmesin. Ya da işte dün akşam beraber oturduğunuz bir arkadaşınızın e, ertesi gün sabah saatlerinde vurulduğunu öğreniyorsun. It was during such times that many families fled Diyarbakır for cities like Istanbul. In a working class suburb, we met Mariam Turpan and her family. Mariam recounts how their problems started when they were living in the southeast of Turkey 10 years ago. Her brother-in-law, pictured on the right, was killed in a mysterious bomb blast. <laughs> To flee repression, the family came to Istanbul. Mariam's husband is at work, and while they both have jobs, paying bills and raising four children is a daily challenge on $500 a month. Mariam is constantly worn out. Bu kadar büyük acılar yaşanıyor ve insanlar hiçbir şey yokmuş gibi davranıyorlar. Beni en çok sinirlendiren şey de bu zaten yani. Years of Kurdish rebellion also took a huge toll on the rest of Turkish society. All of these people were killed just within a few years. Şencan Bayramoğlu is a staunch Turkish nationalist who heads the Istanbul branch of the Mothers of Martyrs Association. Thousands of young soldiers and civilians were killed over the years of conflict with the Kurds. Şencan Bayramoğlu's son Cenk was one of them. Vallahi biz yani Kürtler için reform niye? Yani Türkiye'de onların bir ayrıcalığı yok ki. Onların yani batıdakinin doğudakinden, doğudakinin batıdakinden bir eksikliği yok. Biz hep beraber bir kaderi paylaşan bir milletin insanlarıyız. 
But Turkey's governing party believes that relaxing its attitude towards the Kurds is proof that Turkey is ready for European membership. Well, we believe in that. We are a part of Europe. We have a common history and we have to bring our human rights issue and democratization to the level of all developed countries. So a European Union goal is a means to this end for us and that's why European Union process is very important. Nationalists like Shenzhen Bayramolyu feel betrayed by the government. She says her son died for nothing. Ve öldürenlere taviz üzerinde taviz verilerek her gün taltif ediliyorlar. Aflarına, pişmanlık yasalarıyla, sırtları okşanarak, siz de insansınız diyerek insan olan insanı öldürmez. İnsan olan insanı öldürmez. E bunu nasıl tahmin edebilirsiniz? Yani insan çok zor. Şu resimlere bakıp çok zor. In the Kurdish areas, Erin Keskin is treated as a heroine wherever she goes. She's tried to show us the difference between reforms on paper and the reality on the ground. And though the gap is big, even she holds out hope that the promise of EU membership will change attitudes. Militarist sistemler genelde halkları da militarize ediyorlar. Yani Türk halkı da militarize olmuş. Çok talepte bulunan bir halk değil. O nedenle de Avrupa Birliği'nin talepleri ve Avrupa Birliği'nin talepleri çerçevesinde yapılan değişikliklerin önemli olacağını düşünüyorum. Türkiye'nin Avrupa Birliği'ne alınmasını istiyorum. Unless there's constant pressure from outside the country, Erin Keskin believes discrimination against Kurds will continue. The threat of arrest hanging over her head is evidence enough of that. This nation straddles two continents, but most Turks want to be part of the West. Kurds are hoping that by letting Turkey in, Europe may also be opening the door to a better way of life for Turkish Kurds.